Hello everyone and welcome to my review for Kangen Omega Chapter 92. Last week's chapter was not super remarkable, that's why I didn't really have as much to say about the actual chapter last week, and it seems like a lot of other people acknowledge that as well. But this week's chapter is quite different because we get two super huge developments. The first one is Kano's Next Evolution which is apparently the perfect melding of formless and martial arts. Um, so, at the end of Kengen Ashura, in the battle between Agito and Kuroki, we saw that he evolved multiple times to shorten the gap in between the switches from formless to martial arts and back. Um, but even then, the gap in between the switch was big enough for someone with Kuroki's level of skill and prediction to be able to take advantage of it and basically land critical hits on a Guido when he's not even aware of his surroundings. Um, so that, as Kuroki explains in this chapter, was Kano's greatest weakness. Also, great to see that Kuroki is still here. Um, I was worried that they would just have him leave after Rahito's match, and I thought if they did have him do that, that would be a really big missed opportunity. I really wanted to see what Kuroki has to say about Agito after the time skip, and also what he has to say about Oma after the time skip. Because while, in my opinion, Agito did give Kuroki a harder fight overall in his round in the semifinals, I think Oma, if he were at... 100% health and not basically on death's door during their fight, he would have done a better job against Kuroki than Agito did. Uh, so I also want to see what he has to say about Oma now that he's perfected the Nico style and has a new heart. Um, so, yeah. Even in this chapter, Kuroki says that this new Kano Agito may actually be able to beat him. Because this new Agito has almost no gap in between the switch between formless and martial arts. The, the gap is so tiny that it's basically non-existent. Even, it's apparently, even for someone like Kuroki, it's too small for him to capitalize on, um, which is pretty remarkable. He says himself, if we fought again, there's no guarantee that I would beat you now. I think um, Sandrovich said that there are situations in which Agito could have beaten Kuroki, but I think hearing it from the character himself is, you know, much more compelling than just the author saying it, because I think they also said that, like, there's a situation where Cosmo can choke out Julius, which I'm like, yeah, I guess there is a situation where you could do that, um, but not a very realistic one, um, but now, from Kuroki's own mouth, he said that Agito has a way better chance of beating him now than he did during the Annihilation Tournament, which is pretty remarkable. Um, and we see he just kind of goes to town on Lu Tien. He sweeps him up into the... Okay, this one page is really weird. Like, I can't tell if he hooked his heel and tripped him up, or if he just tossed him up into the air. Um, yeah, this page is kind of lacking with the paneling, or with the choreography. It's a little weird, but the rest of the chapter is pretty solid. Agito has a new ultimate technique, knee to the balls, which, as we all know, is quite powerful. Even Lutian is temporarily crippled by it, so yeah, I don't know, that's just something I really like whenever we have like, oh, look at all these like, complex martial arts where I can use a hand spear to shove it underneath someone's sternum and poke their heart. Or I could just kick someone in the dick, and that's probably... That's probably just as effective. Um, well, maybe not as effective, but uh, you get the point. It's just really funny when I have all like the the super esoteric martial arts shit that goes on. Occasionally, they just act like it's a bar fight or something and kick someone in the nuts. It's pretty fun stuff. Um, and he just kind of beats on Lu Tien for the rest of the chapter, which is pretty satisfying. So um, we finally reached a point in the fight where someone is wailing on the other person. It's been fairly evenly matched for most of the fight so far, the last, like, three chapters, I think. Um, but now, with Agito having mastered both formless and martial arts, he's 
definitely taken the upper hand against Lutian. Lutian is visibly damaged. Megiddo has a little bit of damage, but it's like not 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 really comparable. Like his hair's a little messed up, I guess. Maybe his arms are probably bruised from Lutian stamping on him, but he was using indestructible. Whereas Lutian is visibly scuffed up and bruised, so I'd say Agio is definitely getting the upper hand right now. We get an explanation from uh, Matsudo about why Agito split his personality, which is a very interesting explanation, actually. So, Formless had always been described as the bestial side of Agito, but here we get more of a in-depth explanation of it, and that the Goo ritual was so traumatizing that in order to still have a functioning human personality, or, you know, relatively functioning, his mind forcibly split itself. It forcibly disassociated the beast personality so that there could still be a human personality, which is very fascinating. Um, I'm not like a, a psychologist, but I'm pretty sure that is what happens when you have like trauma that leads to disassociative identity, where it's it's, it's a defense mechanism from the mind, where if you're constantly dealing with this stuff inside your head, you're not going to be able to work like a normal person. So the mind just goes, okay, this thing, we're cutting it out totally separate. Two completely different mindsets, because if you have them intermingling, it's not going to work. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. But it seems like now, um, Agito has been able to integrate them both flawlessly, pretty much. I'm still interested in seeing an Agito backstory. I want to see what Agito was doing during the time skip between Ashura and Omega, and I think we're still going to get that. I still think we've got, like, another three chapters for this fight, despite the development at the end here, which is, uh, Lutian using the fucking advance. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. I know there have been a lot of people saying, hey, if, um, if Lutian was taught the Nico style by Tiger Nico, does that mean he'll also know Demon's Bane? Possibly. Um, but one of the abilities him having that I never expected was him having uh, the advance, which um, Sayaka calls the Kurei clan's removal technique, but I think that's just because Sayaka doesn't know what the advance is. And I mean, not... Not very many people do know what the advance is, so, I mean, that kind of makes sense to me. I'm mostly just wondering what the hell Team Purgatory is thinking, considering Lutian has always fought using the Wu-Wang Fist, and then out of nowhere he starts fighting with this Formless style, and now he looks like he's got extremely severe heart disease now. So it's like, what the hell is going on with him? Now, um, something I just thought of right now. I was thinking of this earlier, but looking into it more... It seems like Lu Tien has the uncontrolled, unrestrained version of the advance. If you recall, when Oma used the advance in round two, it was going wild. It was going haywire, and it was damaging his body to use because it was going out of control. After that, he was able to control the advance, and the effects on his body were nowhere near as severe. He, he, you know, he wasn't turning into this vascular nightmare. His eyes weren't turning red. Or black in this case. Um, I, like, it's, it's black because this is a manga, but I'm pretty sure like, his eyes are filling with blood, so like it's. Yeah, um, they should be red. Um, so, Lutien does not have like this evened out, controlled version of the advance like Oma did in the finals. This is much more reminiscent of the round two advance that Omo is using, which leads me to believe that Lutian is well for starters, he's gonna lose his fucking mind in like the next chapter. But also that he could maybe be damaging his own heart and his brain from doing this, which is not a good idea. Another thing that we know is that when you use the advance, it's much harder to use the Nico style because you're just sort of going nuts and all the precision that's required to use it is lost. So, even if he's able to use Demon's Bane, I doubt he'll be able to use it correctly, because if, assuming this is the 
crazy version of the advance. There's no fucking way that he's going to be able to use it. And even if it's not, it's still harder to use it. And I don't think... Listen. If Lutian has formless advance and demon's bane he is literally the strongest character in the series i don't know what you want me to tell you like this is busted i know people in the subreddit joke occasionally uh just sort of stacking busted abilities but like if this guy is actually able to use all of that stuff to perfection he is no joke the strongest fucking character in the series <laughs> there's no way fans or butts around it um but i think the weaknesses of the advance being that you pretty much lose all your refinement and just become like super brute strength and like there's no subtlety to your movements. I don't think he's going to be able to use formless as well anymore and if he knows any other Nico style techniques like Demon's Bane, I don't think he's going to be able to use it. And even Agito says, uh, you've surrendered yourself to the beast, but no beast can defeat me. So um, yeah, I think Agito is still probably going to stop. We may get like some strength feats from him where he like punches a Guido in the arm really hard or something. Um, but I think that'll probably be the extent of it, because I still think a is gonna win relatively, like, maybe, like, mid-difficulty. High difficulty at the very extreme, but not super high difficulty. Um, so I, I still think he's gonna pull through with this at the end. I think he's just gonna start beating on him. So that should be fun. As for my predictions for next chapter, um, we may see a little bit of Lutian's training with Tiger Nico, like him getting the advance or whatever, um, possibly. I think it's mostly just going to be showcasing what Lutian can do with the advance and probably how it's affected its fighting style. I am very curious to see what the Purgatory fighters have to say, because we really haven't seen them say anything ever since Lutian started using Formless. Um, because he's started using a fighting style that he's never used before, and now he has the advance. He's using what they think is the Curry Clan's removal, um, which, I mean, if Alan has fought, like, once, and the Wu Clan also have removal, maybe they know what that is. I'm sure Lo Long knows what it is, because it's, it's Lo Long. Um, but we'll just have to see. I'm still very interested in seeing that. Um... Especially because this is completely different from what his demeanor is normally. So I'd assume, like, wouldn't, um, Dong Cheng and Wang Fang be like, what the fuck is Lu Tian doing? Like, we've been working with this guy for years and he's never done this shit before. Um, so I'm very interested in seeing that. Um, and I figure the fight will probably go on for, like, another three chapters. I think we'll get the fight going on next week. We'll get some Megiddo backstory, probably the chapter after, and then we'll get the end of the fight. So... I'm looking forward to that. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do King of Nomega chapter reviews every week. If you enjoy other series such as Record of Ragnarok, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Chainsaw Man, I do videos on those series as well, so if you're interested in those, you should definitely check out my channel. If you enjoy discussing King of Nomega with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce on this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to it on my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.